I have a particular uh, love and respect for John. Um, he's, he actually was nutty enough to work for me. And I'm a pretty tough boss because I will run you ragged. Um, but very few people could keep up with what we were doing, and you did. Um, we need to do, learn to do politics because you can't carry out the policy unless we win. And I hope when you start filling up your living room this way, it means maybe the good guys are going to start winning. And as they win, maybe we get to do some great things for our state and our country. So, okay. love you and thank you for letting me be here. I just thank you for being here to support him. Um, John represents everything I think is good in government and what government ought to be. Um, and he, he aligns with all of what I believe. So, um, you know, if you like, if you like what what I've been able to accomplish in terms of making sure that our government is doing its primary purpose is, is, is limited in its scope. It's not intrusive. It's not spending money that it shouldn't be um, on your behalf because it thinks it knows better than you do how to raise your family and how to run your business. Um, I, just, I, I just can't say enough how impressed I have been with by working with John and how he looks at legislation um, and, and evaluates it on its merits and is able to communicate in a way with, with his, his colleagues in the House and, and others to, uh, to influence their votes uh, to, to support that. He's been very supportive of all the, the reforms that we've tried to do against Obamacare. In the, in the House and Senate over the past few years. And um, in price transparency, what we've been able to do in reforming and overseeing government, um, there's, there is an incredible window of opportunity that we have right now. So I just, I, I urge you to generously support candidates like, like John Allen in this primary. We've got to make sure he returns in order to be your voice. Uh, David Schweikert mentioned that we've been friends for a long time, and a lot of that is based on you know love of politics, and it's also the working very hard at it and liking this kind of activity, small groups, meeting with constituents, and so forth. Uh, John Allen, who I strongly support for re-election to the mm -hmm. House, is also one of those people, and that's why we've always gotten along. John and I were both elected. I formerly was a state senator and we were both elected in 2002 and we represented District 7. But, uh, but, proud of, but John and I had a lot of fun and uh, it, you know, we didn't even always agree but we always did it. Uh, we always, I thought, carried ourselves with professionalism and an enjoyment. We became actual friends, which is sometimes rare in this business. It really worked well together, I think, for the benefit of our district. I couldn't have been more pleased to support John when he ran for re or tried to come back last year and was successful in that. I was not surprised because, again, he works. To illustrate the point, my wife and I, uh, I came home at lunch and we went out uh, to the grocery store with our, our then two-year-old twins. And uh, so we came home and there was a suspicious guy on a moped coming from our front door. And he's like, it's who is that guy? And it's a I, scooter. I, I, a scooter. <laughs> Whatever it is. I guess he gave away the joke. Yeah, so no. it was. But it was John out campaigning in the middle of the heat. I thought I was the only guy crazy enough to go up for the insanity vote, by, uh, or the pity vote, depending on how you look at it, uh, by being out in the middle of the day doing that. But John, I always applaud your work ethic. Proud to support you. Glad that you're doing it. I have had the unique privilege of serving with John, Nancy Bartow, and Eddie Farnsworth, who I assume is the next speaker, um, in the legislature. So I know uh, the state is in very good hands down there with those three. And keep up the good work, and I'm sure you can bail. And I'm happy to put up yard signs or do whatever else I can for you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. First of all, great turnout. This is fabulous. I go to a lot of events like this, and I can tell you that it's not very often that you fill a home with people that are interested in what their representatives are doing. So I appreciate you being here, I appreciate your involvement, and I appreciate your support of John. Uh, I mean, why would, why would a guy from the East Valley, you heard Congressman Schweiker kind of beat up on me a little bit for being from the East Valley. Um, why would a guy from the East Valley drive over here on a Saturday to support a schmuck like John Allen? <laughs> um, 
you know, it's because we need people like John. When, when Congressman Schweikert said that I was one of the, the shining stars philosophically, it's because I've read the Founding Fathers. I've read and studied the Constitution. I know what they had in mind, and I can tell you we're not doing that for the most part. I'm glad that Congressman Schweikert's back there. I'm glad we have good people like Matt Salmon, who's my congressman, that are back there fighting the fight. But I honestly believe that the changes are going to come at the state level. I've been asked to run for Congress a number of times, and I've always said, we're not going to change it in Congress. I'm glad they're there to fight and try to make it better. But at the state level, we actually have a chance of doing things that are going to reform and get back in line with what the founders wanted. But we need good people to do that. And people like John Allen. John sits on the Judiciary Committee with me. I, I happen to chair that committee. Um, anybody who knows John, he is, he is certainly a vast repository of wit and sarcasm. <laughs> and I appreciate that, because I, I, I'm likewise willing to throw out a little sarcastic quip now and again. But the thing that I like about John is he's always prepared. We, we, we cover a myriad of issues. And we can't be expert in all of them. But John takes the time to read the bills. He takes the time to find out. If he doesn't understand, he'll call experts and, and become knowledgeable on the issue. People like John are the ones that are going to get us back to that idea that the founders had, that government doesn't know everything, that we actually empower government, and it's limited. Well, we've lost our way in that. That we Now, now we focus kind of on what's government going to allow us to do. We need to change, get back to where, where the founders were. We need to get back to saying, we have the power, it's our life, leave us alone, except for those limited areas where it's appropriate for government to have authority. But that's what we grant to them. John knows that, John does that, John's conservative. A few years ago, we had a, a budget deficit that was worse than any other state in the country as far as a percentage of the overall budget. We were worse than California, if you can believe that. They had about a 24% structural deficit. We had about a 31, 32% structural deficit. We made the decisions that were tough, but we had a conservative legislature. It allowed us now to come back into where we had a balanced budget. We had money in the, in the bank, and we're starting to push back the other way. We have those that are saying, because we made a little extra money, we now need to spend it all. So we, we are at that crossroads that Senator Bartow talked about. If we aren't careful, we're going to slip back into that, that, that problem we got ourselves into. So we need to continue to have people like John, Nancy, and others, people like Jim at the, at the city level. Uh, I appreciate his service there. Um, I can tell you the cities can do a lot of damage or they can do a lot of good. And people like, like Jim and Sal DeCicio are doing great things at the city level. So in closing, I simply want to say it depends upon you. We at the legislature reflect you. We're no different than you. I'm just a guy who, who had a business, who decided that he didn't like what was going on in government, so I ran. I've been in the legislature 12 years doing my very best to do some good things. But we can't do it unless you support us. So please support John, please support Nancy, please support Jim, so that we can continue to push and, and protect the freedoms and liberties that, that you have that are God-given. So with that, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you for the breakfast. It was wonderful. And, uh, and I really I ask you to, to, to give generously to John. It's tough to ask for money, but money is really what makes these campaigns work. So I appreciate you being here, and thank you for supporting John. Appreciate it. To have the support of so many willing to come out on a Saturday, it really helps. It, it, you know, you, the candidate runs the race, but he can't get elected without help. I mean, not just votes, it's money, it's yard signs, it's encouragement, it's pats on the back, it's wearing the buttons, it's all that sort of stuff. And it, it seems kind of hokey, but it's our system, and, and we have people that this is the field we've decided to be missionaries in. And so it, it's one of those things, without support, it's about me. With support, it's about us, and, and it really makes a big difference. Eddie and I do have a ton of fun in the legislature, and, and Jim and I, at, at almost every event we've ever gone to, uh, just sort of zone out and fool around and stuff like that. I, I'm a happy... He doesn't really mean that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jim I'm listening with rapt attention yeah. right now. <laughs> Not that anyway. But Jim has always been able to do two things at once, and I... <laughs> <laughs> but, but, there's something about being a happy warrior in politics. Uh, there's a way of persuading people, but the easier way is to win their hearts, and their minds will follow. 
uh, I think logically our worldview is the correct one. But if I can win somebody through friendship, I'm willing to do that too. And, and I've had great success crossing the aisle working with guys like Dave Bradley on foster care issues. Dave Bradley and I don't agree on anything else, but we agreed on that. And we ran several bills that moved forward foster kids getting into universities and other things like that. There's an opportunity to make a difference. The other thing is, and I, I think Eddie said it very well, the real changes are going to come at the state level. They haven't come yet. But you have to have the right pieces in place when these things happen. I think I'm one of those. Eddie's one of those. You were one of those when we were down there. But we've replicated ourselves in other candidates because I got Nancy to run and got her in, and she's a good vote. And, and you, you have to look for those opportunities. So although the names on the signs are mine, it's nothing worse than thinking I'm out there alone. So this event means so very much to me. So I appreciate that. Money-wise, please, you can also write a check. Besides, and I think you can give, what, $2,000 a piece or something? Yeah. Feel free to do that. <laughs> but, but tell you the truth, $100 buys, you know, signs. It buys things. The, mo the most expensive thing in campaigns is stamps. Even though it's the cheapest single item, it's the most expensive over the course of, of campaign. Because that is what you do. You mail and mail and mail. So you say, okay, I'm going to buy John some stamps. And that's the thing. And I promise you we'll make good use of it. Give you an example. Last, uh, last cycle, I came in second. First and second get seats. The, the lady came in first with independent expenditures and stuff like that. Spent about $90,000. The guy just behind me spent $32,000. Uh, the, the, uh, that's what he posted, though we got seven mailers from him, so I don't know how he did. <laughs> but let's say, let's say that his posting was correct. And, and another guy, he spent about $32,000 also. I spent twelve five. I spent twelve five. I, I put a lot of gas in my little scooter, and I came to visit a lot of people, and I tried to articulate a reason why to, to vote for me. I'd like to do it on more than twelve five. <laughs> uh, but we can. And, you know, but we will make very good use of every dollar you give us. Who got the postcard with three stamps on it? Yeah, we, we had some leftover stamps this year. We just sort of make these Franken postcards. You know, just like nothing, everything covered by stamps. I have a great partner in this, and my wife Tina. Uh, she is probably the best executive director of a husband ever made. Uh, I very rarely waste my time because my wife keeps going, don't, don't, don't do it that way. No, that would be better. But she's a partner in this, and has been such a great helper. So when you get one, you get the other. Uh, Tina doesn't come down to the legislature and tell me what to do, unless it's personal. And then I have to but, but she does keep me on track, so it's wonderful to have such a great partner in this. And I just want to thank you very much for coming. I hope you enjoyed our speakers. Uh, get to know them a little bit better. I'm really hopeful that Eddie will be the next speaker. We have a lot of lifting to do, so if you run into a member, tell them what a great person he is. And uh, try to encourage them to vote for me for that. And uh, thank you. Do you have anything else? Eat sausage. Eat sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you. Stay as long as you like.